I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wake up, we're... Welcome to the third episode of We're Student Media's Morning Show. I'm Jacob Taylor. And I'm Mason Klink. And this is Wake Up We're. We have your daily announcements for Monday, November 6th. Happy National Nacho Day. For lunch, we are having grilled cheese sandwich, sweet potato tots, and vegetarian bean salad. Happy birthday to everyone celebrating over the weekend. Saturday, Ashton Hands, Alexander Hatfield. Sunday, Sav Dinzel. And today, Ava Altimore, Jaden Bonely, Landon Hot. Mr. Olenek and Mrs. Ryan. Any students ages 13 through 17 who are interested in Teen Superior Group, please see Ms. Charleston or scan the QR code for details. No sports teams are competing this evening. And now, your fun fact of the day. It snows metal on Venus. That's all for your daily announcements. Coming up, we bring you a message from the desk of Mr. Arno, along with weather, feature stories, interviews, trends, sports, and more. Now, on with the show. First, Cole Coranda keeps us updated with Mother Nature's plans. Good morning, Ware High School. I'm Cole Coranda, and I'm here to bring you your weather for the week. Starting off, today is a low of 51 with a high of 63 with partly cloudy skies. Tuesday is going to be a low of 42 with a high of 55 with showers. Wednesday, it is going to be a low of 37 and a high of 49 with morning showers. Thursday, it is going to be a low of 38 with a high of 46, with rain in the morning and possible snow showers. Finally, Friday, it is going to be a low of 34, with a high of 44. And that's all for the week, Weir. Have a freezing cold week. Brr. Thanks, Cole. Make sure to remember your jackets for the upcoming months. Next up, Malachi Stromal covers Brook Week. Who am I here with? Gerald Palladino. Malia Palamas. That was figured. And what are you guys? I'm a fairy. Dairy. I'm the Virgin Mary. Thank you. Who am I here with? Kendra Custer. Jenny Jeffers. <laughs> what are you guys dressed as? Fraternity. And maternity. Thank you. Who am I here with? Jenna Costello. Malia Upbury. What are you guys dressed as? Wild West and Princess. Thank you. Who am I here with? Hello, good morning. What does Brook Spirit Week mean to you? It's another chance for the We're High Red Riders to show how their program is a dominant program in the Valley. Absolutely. Thank you. Who am I here with? Sarah Sturt. What's your trophy that you have? I won a fishing tournament. Thank you. Who am I here with? Madeline. Kaylin. What do you like best about Brook? Fishing and hunting. Thank you. Who am I here with? Eva Baltimore. What is your favorite college football team? WVU. Who is the person on your jersey? I don't know. You're not a real fan. Thanks, Malachi. Brook Week was definitely a success. And thank you to everyone who participated throughout the week. Now, Jennifer Fiddler covers book banning. This year, Banned Books Week took place the first week of October. Banned Books Week focuses on historical attempts to censor books in schools and libraries, and it celebrates our current freedom to read. Book bans and restrictions are escalating in classrooms all across the country. Readers, authors, teachers, and anyone in general opposing these censorships are being encouraged to involve themselves in the stunting of book banning. Even a handful of celebrities have been making an impact. Ariana Grande and Gabrielle Union are just two out of the nearly 200 celebrities who have signed an open letter in an attempt to use their large platforms to make a change. I talked to Mr. Truex for more input. Um, book banning is typically when a entity such as a school system, a state, or um, any other governing body restricts access to content based on a wide variety of different factors. From um, content that might be controversial, it could be something adult themes, it could be language, it could be how certain characters are portrayed, 
it could be um, gender based, it could be time based, it could have to do with um, racial slurs or um, LGBTQ themes, a lot of different reasons. I do think that book banning, especially the surge that we've seen in the last two or three years is dangerous to the idea of free thinking because it just has people in bubbles. A lot of times people see banned book and they don't even know why it's banned. They just go, oh, that book's bad because it is banned as opposed to reading it for themselves and wondering why it is. Some things are not appropriate for a public high school classroom, but I think they're appropriate for a public high school library and should be able to be at least checked out and uh, explored by students. Just telling them this book is bad doesn't do anything for their critical thinking skills. Let them read it and decide for themselves if it's bad. Thank you, Mr. Truax. As book banning is on the rise, committed students and teachers will continue to speak out. Thanks, Jennifer. Definitely a controversial topic. Next up, Jacob Taylor and Colson Kimmel talked to Shane Arnold in an in-studio interview. How has completing CTE and information management affected you? Um, I think it's just prepared me for the world. You know, I'm learning all programs like Microsoft Word and Excel and stuff like that, and that just prepares you for life. How has bowling impacted your career at Weir? Um, it's, it's allowed me to meet a lot of people. I've met people from all 50 states, a few countries, and it's also allowed me to earn scholarship money for school. Can you tell us a little about what you do when you volunteer at the football games? So basically what I do is I run the LED graphics on the scoreboard. So whenever you see the sign that says, like, let's go Riders, or you see the 100-year anniversary logo on the scoreboard, I do that. Thanks, guys. And thank you, Shane, for all you do for Weir. Next, Peyton covers GAA and the upcoming events. Hi, and good morning, Weir. My name is Peyton Purnell, and I interview GAA advisors, Mrs. Alkar and Mrs. Hype, and other GAA club members about the club. Here's Mrs. Alkar and Mrs. Hype with some answers. What made you want to become the advisor of the GAA? Um, a few years ago, students came to me asking if I would be the advisor, and I was very honored to um, take on the position. I was an active member of GAA when I was in high school, and so when I took over, I wanted to promote um, the idea of building women up, especially those in sports, and getting our students involved in participating in attending the events to show that we are encouraging women to not only be better in their academics and their athletics, but also in raising the spirits of other people. What previous things so far has the GA done this year? Um, so far, we have um, raised $700 for the Weirton Medical Center Breast Care Center um, here in Weirton. We did that by selling ribbons in the cafeteria to students and also to um, families during open house. Uh, we did the breast cancer awareness walk that um, we did here in the gymnasium. Uh, just today, we donated that money to the Breast Care Center. And as for future activities, we're unsure right now um, what we will be doing. Uh, however, the dance is in January. Um, we are looking into sponsoring a trip to New York City and, of course, some other activities where we work with the community and give our time. So possibly in the springtime doing a um, sports event here at the school where we invite students, younger students, to come to the school and we can teach them a variety of skills in different types of sports. So maybe soccer, basketball, um, any uh, sport that our club members may be involved in. Why did you want to help with the GAA? I wanted to help with GAA because I was a female athlete in high school and I think that it's important to give girls the opportunity and to showcase their athletic abilities at Ware High School now. Thank you, Mrs. Alkire and Mrs. Hype. Now for the other members of the club. What made you want to join the GAA? Um, I'm a three-sport athlete, and I like being in clubs and supporting my fellow female athletes. I'm a tennis player, and I like also supporting my female athletes. A reason why I joined the GAA is because I think it was a good program to join, and I think it's just a good way to like get in like to school. Because it was a fun fun club to join in. Do you like being in the GAA? I do. I also do. I do like being in the GAA. Yes. What all things have you participated in? 
almost all of the things that I can go to to support people in the self-defense class. The self-defense class, volleyball games, soccer games, um, any like fundraiser we've ever done, I participated in. Um, the only thing I participated in is the breast cancer selling, uh, the breast cancer ribbon selling at the open house. Um, some of the sports, not all of them, I couldn't make, but uh, whatever other fundraising or anything else that they needed help with. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Peyton. Next up, Emily Gump with her take on entertainment. Good morning, Wake Up Weir. I'm Emily Gump, and here's your entertainment segment. On this week's topic, we are talking about nepotism babies. Nepotism babies are the children of famous parents. Your favorite celebrities might be nepo babies and you may not even know it. Some people may say this gives celebrity a step up in Hollywood because of their famous parents. Some of these celebrities acknowledge they have an advantage. And some say this makes Hollywood even harder for them. These celebrities can vary from Haley Bieber, Kate Hudson, Drew Barrymore, George Clooney, and many more faces. Here are students on how they feel about nepotism in Hollywood. Who am I here with? A. Baltimore. And how do you feel about nepotism babies? I feel like they have an advantage compared to other people. Thank you. Here with? Asia Beatty. Do you feel like that having a famous parent gets you a step ahead in Hollywood? I think so, but I think it also depends on if the celebrity gives that child exposure or if the child actually like does something to get exposure. I think it definitely helps, but it also depends on a lot of factors. Thank you. Here with? Jake Bishop. Would you want to be a celebrity's child? Why or why not? No, I wouldn't because I think it'd be too much, I don't know, just too much to deal with. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's all for the entertainment segment. Have a great day, Weir. Thank you, Emily. It's great to know what's going on around the world. Good morning, Weir. I'm Emma Nichols. And I'm Hannah Dorsey. Today we interviewed people based on the latest trends that they've heard on social media. Who am I here with? Kaylee Silver. And what's the latest trend you've heard of recently? Comfy clothing. Thank you. Who am I here with? Melody McGaw. And what are some trends that you've seen or heard lately? Um, people with their hair middle parted. Thank you. Who am I here with? Uh, Jordan Wiseman. And what's the latest trend you've heard about? Puffer jackets. Thank you. Who am I here with? Megan Brinkley. And what's the latest trend that you've heard about? Um, like baggy shirts with like baggy jeans. Thank you. Who am I here with? Chad Wright. And what are the latest social media trends you've heard of? Um, pretty much my friends on uh, Snapchat talked about basketball season coming around. And that's about it. Thank you. Who am I here with? Raina Ryder. And what are some trends you've heard on social media or just in general lately? I mean, there is the like makeup trends with like the Halloween stuff with the floss, I think it was. And I know there's some Christmas ones going around. Okay, thank you. Now, Angela Paul brings some interviews and gives more information on fall activities. Here are some fall activities to do during the month of November. There are still many fun activities to do. I asked some students and teachers what are their favorite fall activities they like to do. Who am I here with? Emma Nichols. What is your favorite fall activity to do? I'd have to say baking or going to the pumpkin patch. Thank you. Who am I here with? Hagen Yoho. What is your favorite fall activity to do? Uh, travel volleyball. Thank you. Who am I here with? Mr. Kettler. What is your favorite fall activity to do? Um, I have season tickets to WVU football, so um, going to the games, um, all the home games, that's my favorite thing to do. Thank you. Who am I here with? Guy Manili. What is your favorite fall activity to do? Um, I like watching football and uh, playing some golf. Thank you. <laughs> Who am I here with? Sherry Langthorne. What is your favorite fall activity to do? I like to go uh, swishing through the leaves like this. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, for those great ideas for things to do in the fall. This episode, Lily Caranda brings back your senior spotlight 
showcasing four new members of the class of 2024. Who am I here with? Angela Paul. And what will you miss most when you graduate? Just playing sports. Thank you. Who am I here with? Emma Maloney. And where do you see yourself in 10 years? Probably working in a hospital because right now I'm getting my CNA license and that's what I want to do when I grow up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who am I here with? Ava Babinchak. And where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, probably finishing law school. Thank you. Who am I here with? Emily Gump. And what's your favorite high school memory? Either when I got on homecoming court or I went to state. Thanks, Lily. Can't wait to meet more of our senior class and make sure you fill out the form located in your email from Lily Caranda to be a part of the next senior spotlight. Next up, Mia Kaufman and Christian Long recap the sports week with the top three highlights over the past week. Good morning, morning Rear. Rear. I'm Mia Kaufman. And I'm Christian Long. Here are our top three sports plays of the week. Starting off at number three, we have football. Malachi Shermile threw a 31-yard pass to G Cross to score a touchdown to advance ahead of Brooke, winning their game on senior night. At number two, we have volleyball. On their senior night, they beat Madonna for the city championship. Here's a kill from Marissa Macia. And now time for our number one play of the week. The girls soccer team won sectionals and regionals to advance to compete at state. Here's Olivia Baker's PK against East Fairmont after going into double overtime. Shot to win the regional championship. Thanks for watching our top three sports plays of the week. Thanks Mia and Klong for showing cases these plays made by our athletes. Now we have Kaylee and Haley with the take of the day. Uh, I think we did good and worked really hard to get where we are and I'm proud of all my teammates. Um, we played pretty good uh, a lot of the games. We should be 10 0, but it's all right. Uh, I feel honored, and I'm just happy I could do it with my team. All of our hard work paid off in the off season. Something that's very special. As a senior, I'm proud of my team and the work we put in to go to regionals, and hopefully we make it to states. I'm very excited for regionals, and I believe we can be regional champions. I'm happy that we made it all the way to regionals, and I think we can go to states. Um, it was really meaningful for us because we've been shooting for this for a lot of years now, and none of the games were easy, so it made it even better. Um, yeah, it was really hard to make it there considering we actually – um, haven't beaten Oakland in like six years <laughs> until this year so like that was like really cool and yeah and it was really hard. I think it was really good beating all the teams that we've been wanting to beat for so long and like we were we've been so close while well, we were kind of close last year but like we actually made it this year. Thanks Kaylee and Haley and good luck to these sports teams. Last but not least, we have Joey Bennett with this episode's health report in which she talks with students and teachers about mental health. Good morning, Weir. My name is Joey Bennett, and for this week's segment, I'm going to be talking about how movement can help reduce stress. I interviewed some teachers and students on what movement they do and does it help with their stress. What type of movement do you do when you're stressed? When I'm stressed, I typically try and do a lot of yoga stretches. If I'm here at school and I'm in my room, I will tend to do some stretches at the desk, um, some seat stretches. Um, a lot of times I do a lot of deep breathing, um, three, two, one breathing, deep breath in, out through the nose, or in through the nose, out through the mouth, those types of things. Um, I typically go to the gym five to six days a week. Um, I'm usually there anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. And what does it help reduce stress? 
Um, I do. Uh, it's a good way to kind of release any frustrations from the day or, or whatever. Um, but usually if I miss a week, like I miss the last week, um, from being sick or whatever. Um, but usually if I miss a week, it's, it kind of wears on you a little bit and you can't wait to get back. I run. And does it help with your stress? I would say it does because you're like distracted and you're not thinking about like anything else that's going on. What tip with movement do you do? I play soccer and sometimes I just walk around. And does it help with your stress? It does because like the sport's something that I like, so it like to distress me when I'm in a bad day or something. And walking around like makes me reflect about life, so yeah, it does. Thank you. Some facts and statistics on why stress can be reduced by movement is that it releases endorphins that make you happy, and then it also helps emotions move through our bodies and provides an outlet for self-expression. That's it for this segment. Thank you, Joey, for covering such an important and sensitive topic. That's all for today. Have, Have a, a wonderful, wonderful week, we're... we're...